Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the five most common mistakes that agency owners make on sales calls. Now, by being aware of these mistakes and fixing these mistakes, you're not only going to be able to close more sales calls, but going to those meetings with a lot more confidence. Now, if you're new to my channel, a bit about me, my name is Jaime and I run one of the leading e-com agencies in the world. Right now, pulling around 70K per month. And at this point, my team and I combined have had over a thousand sales calls for my agency. I've been doing this for over three three years and the average number of sales calls that I'm having every single month is over a hundred. So I've definitely learned a few things here and there and I want to share that with you in this video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The last mistake that most agency owners make on a sales call is they don't set the frame correctly. Now what you need to understand is that in a sales scenario, there's always going to be a buyer seller dynamic. The buyer in this case would be the client and the seller in this case would be the agency owner. Now, what you want to do going into that goal is you want to level the playing field as much as possible. And the reason why I say that is because if the buyer seller dynamic is very unbalanced, meaning the buyer is up here and the seller is down here and the seller is constantly trying to validate their service, trying to validate themselves to the buyer, trying to sell themselves to the buyer, that actually removes a lot of power and authority from the seller. Why? Because the buyer literally feels like they're on this golden throne and they get to choose, right? They get to choose whether they want to work with you or not. What you want to do when you jump on that sales call is you want to level the playing field until them, hey, as much as you want to see whether I'm a good fit to work with you, we're also doing our own internal diagnosis to really understand whether you'd be a good fit to work with our agency. And so we're not so much kicking them into submission and trying to make us the buyer and then the seller. We're trying to just level the playing field so that it's just a conversation between two business owners who respect each other and we're not having to validate ourselves the whole goal and trying to sell them onto something because that's going to reduce a lot of power and authority from your side. So level the playing field, make sure that you understand that buyer seller dynamics, set the frame straight out the bat, right? So uh, when you jump on that goal, tell them, hey, here's how the goal is going to go, right? I'm going to ask you a few questions, get to know more about your business and see if we'd be a good fit to work together. So that is the first mistake that most agency owners make. And now onto the second one. The second mistake that most agency owners make on a sales call is they get straight into the pitching. Now, here's what you need to understand, right? All sales is, is bringing awareness to the point A, where the client is currently at, their point B, where they're trying to get to, and making it very, very clear, abundantly clear, that you are the vehicle that's gonna get them from point A to point B, right? And so before we convey the fact that we are the vehicle that's gonna get them to their desired situation, we need to make sure that we understand where they're currently at and what they truly want, their pain points, their desires, right? And where they're actually trying to get to. If you don't know those two variables of the equation, then the vehicle that you're gonna convey is probably not gonna be the right vehicle for them. And so it's really, really important that when you go into that call, you go into it with a, a mindset of, I'm gonna diagnose where they're currently at first, I'm gonna see whether I can help them or not, and I'm gonna see how I could help them best, right? Also, when you do the diagnosis, you know how to pitch the offer in a way that's gonna resonate with them, right? Maybe for them, it's all about scaling their business so that they can get funding, right? Or maybe it's all about, you know, uh, going from retail to e-commerce and finally having more peace of mind because, you know, with the current landscape, there's a lot of unpredictability with the retail side of things. That, those are some examples. But my point is when you understand their current situation and what they're trying to get to, then you're in a much better spot to actually pitch. Another reason why you don't want to get into the pitching straight away is because asking questions, the right type of questions, right, gets the prospect a lot more engaged. I see this a lot and it's a massive mistake uh, by agency owners. They hop on the goal and straight away they pull up a, a slideshow where they walk the client through everything that they're gonna do for them, how the service works, and here's what happens. The client at that point, at the very start of the call, the client is very cold, right? They don't know who you are, they don't know why they should listen to you, and now you're showing them this slide deck, right? This, this slideshow, and walk them through what you can do for them, right? All interest is lost because you haven't engaged them first. If you think back to maybe your you know, school years or your college years, ask yourself, right? When were you most engaged? When the professor was walking you through a slideshow on the board or when you were having a, maybe like a low class debate or the professor was asking you questions directly? The answer is probably when you were in a, in a debate setting or the professor was asking you questions directly. And so the same thing applies for sales calls. You wanna make sure that the client is engaged, especially at the start. And the way you do that is by asking the right questions and getting them to answer. So that is the second mistake that most agency owners make, which is getting straight into the pitching. And with that being said, let's go right into the third point. Now, before we get into the third point, if you are enjoying the video so far and you're getting value out of it, go ahead and make sure that the gray, ugly looking uh, like button is turned blue. The YouTube algorithm loves it when you do that and I really appreciate it. But with that being said, the third most common mistake that agency owners make is they don't add any value on the sales call. 
All they do is they just ask questions. Now that's a bit ironic because literally the previous point was all about asking questions and engaging the client in that way. But what you need to understand is that you have to have the right balance. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of agency owners, what they do is they go the whole sales goal asking questions. And so the problem with that is in the prospect's mind, there are two questions that you need to answer by the time you get to the end of the goal. And they're very subtle, they're very unconscious, but these are the two questions that are weighing the heaviest on their mind. The first question is, does this person know what they're actually talking about? Uh, and the second question is, would or have other people trusted this person? Now, this doesn't mean that you have to have past testimonials or, or past results, but the main thing is you have to convey your expertise. And so the main problem here is that most agency owners just ask questions the whole goal, right? But they don't actually add value. And so when you get to the end of the goal, especially if that's your first goal, you haven't had a demo goal or anything like that, the client doesn't really know whether you know your stuff or you don't, right? And so what you need to make sure you do is you want to make sure you add a value, little value snippets on that goal. You want to make sure that you leave as much as you possibly can on the table and showcase your expertise. One of the ways that I like to do that is using this method that I've coined called the subtle flex approach. And what that means is you lead with questions. For example, you could say, what does your Facebook marketing strategy look like? Right? You hear out their answer. And once the answer is just like a casual conversation where you tell them, have you tried this, right? We've actually done this for a few of our clients, or if you don't have any clients, we've actually seen this done in your industry, right? And the combination of driving people to the top of the funnel using Facebook, because we get you know lower cost of acquisition is incredibly powerful, but then if we pair that with retargeting on uh, Google and having open presence, uh, it's really just a deadly combination, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That's just an example, it's a really off the cuff example, but uh, you get my point, right? You wanna make sure that you add a value, and the way you can do that is by fast leading with those questions, but then when they answer them, make sure that you add your two cents to that conversation so that they can see, right? In a very unconscious manner sometimes, they can see that you know your stuff, right? And they can see that you actually master the stuff and you're not just a fly by night opportunist trying to get them signed onto a service that you don't really know much about, okay? And the final thing that I would say on that is you don't have to be an expert at the start, right? And it's very important that you understand that. If you just know more than they do, right? If you're just one, two steps ahead, you're still gonna seem like an expert because you know more than them. Right? So it's not about giving them a mass class on your service and just going on a, on a 30 minute rant, but it's just this little uh, snippets and, and this little nuggets of value that are really gonna go a very long way. So that is the third most common mistake that agency owners make. And with that being said, let's get into the fourth mistake. The fourth mistake that most agency owners make on a sales call is they're scared of the no. And by the way, all these mistakes, I've done them myself. I definitely feel you and I understand why people are like this, right? Because when you get those first sales calls, it seems like your life's on the line, right? Like this, this client can literally change your whole life and, and the whole trajectory of your career. Like you could, you know, a 3K a month retainer or a 4K a month retainer or even a 2K a month retainer could mean moving out of your parents' house or, you know, dropping out of college, whatever it is, right? And so there's a lot of, you know, there's high stakes on these calls. And I completely understand that you may want the yes really badly, but that is the one thing that is actually gonna prevent you from signing this client. Right? That, that scarcity mindset. And so the more you can put yourself in a, a mindset of abundance, right? Whether it's with affirmations telling yourself that there's plenty of, uh, of clients in the sea or with your actions. One of the things that I like to do that has worked tremendously well for me is you wanna chase the no. If at the end of the call, the client is not giving you a straight up answer, right? They're trying to delay the no or they're trying to you know, say, oh, I'll get back to you uh, in a few days. And, and uh, in reality, they're just gonna ghost you make sure that you chase the no then and there, right? Tell them, hey, look, this may not be a good fit, right? But, uh, you know, I'm very, uh, I'm very straightforward and I'm very honest and I'd really love if you could just give me a no right now, no hard feelings, right? And, and we'll, we'll uh, close your slot and then we'll move on. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's not for everyone. And so when you show that abundance mindset, when you show, show that you're completely fine with the no, that actually makes you much more attractive to them, right? And so the problem is a lot of people think that when they're gonna do this, right, when they're gonna chase the no, is going to turn a potential client who would say yes into a no. Now, that's probably never going to happen. The only two things that can happen is a client who was a no, but was just delaying it because maybe he felt awkward telling you on the call. It's just going to tell you straight up no on the actual call there and then, which is great because you don't have to waste your time following up with this person. And most importantly, uh, a client who is on the fence, they don't quite know. Maybe it's a yes, maybe it's a no, 50-50, right? Um, that's going to turn a possible yes on the fence into a yes, because now you've shown that scarcity, you've shown that you don't really care if they jump on or not. In reality, you, you do, right? But you're, you're conveying uh, this mindset and that's gonna make you more attractive to them. And it's gonna be the one thing that's gonna help them over that fence. So that is that for the fourth mistake. And now onto the final and fifth mistake. 
The fifth and final mistake is a lack of what I call brutal honesty. Now, a lot of agency owners, especially when you're starting out, you think you can get away with little lies here and there. And look, a white lie that doesn't hurt anyone, maybe could work, right? But lying, saying that you have results that you don't, saying that you have clients that you don't, is always gonna come back to bite you in the ass. And so one of the things that I've, I've come to realize from having a lot of goals is that prospects love brutal honesty. And the reason why that is, is because most agency owners are the complete opposite, right? They overpromise and under deliver. They are unrealistic about the expectations that they set. They lie about the results that they've gotten, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so most prospects have built huge walls around service providers because they're so used to being lied to and, and being overpromised. And so one of the things that has helped me tremendously, not only in life, but also in my agency is being brutally honest, right? Being brutally honest about the results that they can expect be brutally honest about the clients that I've got, be brutally honest about my past results, et cetera, et cetera. And this is particularly important if you're just starting out. And so for example, I had this one client when I was starting out my agency and they came to us and you know, he had very unrealistic expectations because the previous agency that they were with had promised them the world and hadn't delivered on, the, on those promises because quite frankly, they weren't realistic. And so I told them, look, those promises that they made you at the start, those are not realistic. We can choose for this, and maybe if we do this, we can go to here. And if we go to here, then we can go to here, right? Uh, but we cannot do, we cannot get here, right? Uh, from where we're currently at. And when I told him that, he absolutely lost his mind. Like he absolutely lost it, right? And he closed the deal like that because for once, someone was being brutally honest with him and the state of his business and you know the, the goals that we could aspire to. And that closed the deal effortlessly for me because I was brutally honest about the things that he could expect and I set the right expectations. One of the great things about setting the right expectations uh, as well, and being brutally honest at first, is that if they do end up signing, right, they're going into it with the right expectations. If you end up signing a client using that gimmick or over promising, sure, you've got a, a client that you've signed, but you're never gonna be able to deliver on those promises, and so the client's just gonna leave, right? Because, not because you're, maybe you're getting them incredible results, and those are realistic results, but, but since you set the bar, at a level that wasn't realistic, they're never gonna appreciate the work that you're doing, okay? And so it's always a losing scenario for both parties and you wanna make sure that you're brutally honest with your prospects. I can assure you, you'll be shocked by the type of response, the positive response that you get from prospects when you're just brutally honest with them. So that is that for this video, but I do have a little bonus mistake um, for the people that stay till the end. And that mistake is presentation. And by that, I mean the way you present yourself, the way you show up on a call with a prospect. Now, presentation is not a deal breaker. Honestly, make sure that you get those five mistakes that we just covered right. Those are by far, you know, way more important, but presentation, the right presentation can be a really good addition. Now, I'm not saying you have to suit up for a call or wear, you know, a tie for a call. Um, honestly, wear whatever makes you comfortable, but do look professional. Right, and I will leave that interpretation for uh, for uh, everyone to make. But you know, make sure that you don't you're not wearing a tank top. Make sure that you're looking clean. Make sure you show up in a way you deem professional. A few other things is making sure that the background, your background, is clean. Now, when I started my agency, I was literally working from a tiny bedroom apartment in London that I was sharing with a few of my friends, right? And so what I did is I had a blank background. Okay, having a wall on the back is way better than having you know a dirty room in the back or make you know having a bed unmade uh, you know, in, in the background of your shop. So those little things are quite important because a lot of people uh, think, oh, well, the, the, the client's not gonna make a judgment. Um, you know, we're just humans, right? And, and it's completely natural for people to make uh, you know, an, an, an instant judgment on the type of person you are just by looking at you know, your background, just by looking, you know, if, you, if your bed is unmade in the back, right? Or your, your room is dirty, right? They're gonna make a snap judgment of you and that's not gonna benefit you. And so if you cannot get a really clean background or a cool looking background, at least make sure that you have the least possible distractions or the least possible things that could make someone go, well, this person is probably not very professional. Final two things is making sure that lighting is good. Again, it doesn't have to be a box light like I've got, a, I've got here. Um, you know, having natural light could also work, but make sure that, you know, you're, 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 you're not dimly lit, right? Uh, make sure that you're well lit and that they can actually see your face, your expressions, right? Um, that's quite important. And the final thing is audio. Again, you don't have to have a very expensive mic, but if your laptop is not the greatest quality, at least make sure that you have earphones uh, plugged in so that you can use that mic. Having good audio for your sales goals is quite important. 
So that is officially uh, that for this video. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a massive thumbs up. Helps out down with the algorithm, the whole channel, and I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you're new here and you haven't subbed to my channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss an update. And the final thing is, if you haven't checked out my free Facebook community, it's an incredible community for of like many people looking to scale their agency and level up in life, all you gotta do is check out the link in the description, go ahead and apply. And if you are a good fit, we'll let you in. And as always, hope everything's going well in your journey and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.